We'll call the meeting of the Planning Commission to order um, this May 17th, 2023. If staff could call roll, please. Ryan Pearson. Here. Paul Wagaman is excused. Philip Combs. Present. Lynn Larson is absent. Brian Parsons. Here. Robert Estrada is excused. Don Daniels. Here. You have quorum, Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, before us, we have the minutes of May uh, 3rd, 2023. Looking for a motion. I'll put forward a motion okay. to approve. I'll second. second. All right. Well, we have Mr. Parsons made a motion and Mr. Pearson made a second. Any discussion? Changes? Okay. All those in favor by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Hearing none. Minutes passed as written. Thank you. Any changes to our agenda tonight? No, Mr. Chair. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, now we're going to open it up uh, tonight under public comment. Anyone wishing to speak before my fellow commissioners um, on any topic? Please. Uh, oh, wait, they had a sign up sheet. Uh, out there, sorry, we'll get that first. But anyone wishing to speak on any topic can do so. Just step up to the mic, state your name and your uh, city you reside. And if you are here under public hearing on the um, updates to the Lakewood multifamily tax exemption, we'll do that later. So the testimony will be recorded if you're here for that. But under public comment, if you're wishing to speak it uh, on any topic, and I've got the list and we'll call them up. Thank you. You have about three minutes, uh, if you could. So we have about Scott uh, Baird. How about that? That's what you get for signing up on line one, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, good evening, everybody. I'm uh, Scott Baird. I'm a uh, Lakewood resident, moved here five years ago, and I'm a member of the Lakewood Racket Club. I wanted to speak to you all about our expansion efforts and just give some testimonial about the impact I've seen that LRC has had on the community. Um, it's had a huge impact on my life. I'm new to tennis, so I've started playing there. Uh, my family plays there and has picked up sport. And I've really witnessed a lot of uh, Lakewood citizens and a lot of positive activity that is generated there. Um, families, high schools, community efforts and activities there, are all, all going on, uh, very positive things that are going on at the Lakewood Racquet Club. Um, I'm also a, the, the new chairman of the membership committee there, and I can speak to a little bit more detail on uh, that we're busting at the seams, actually. We've kind of reached our capacity. We would love to have more members. We would like to have more activities there. Um, but we've reached the, uh, you know, it's a finite amount of court time we have, you know, and, um, and we're exceeding it. So without expansion, we're not really going to be able to bring more members of the community in and, and all that good stuff that happens there is going to be uh, for a small segment of the population. And we'd love to increase that. So that's sort of what I wanted to mention, just what a positive part of the community the Lakewood Racket Club is, what an impact we have on the citizens there. And uh, we would like to expand that so we could offer that uh, those opportunities to more citizens. Thank you. Appreciate appreciate your comments. Uh, Bill Peretta, welcome back. <laughs> You're welcome. You know, all the time. Hello, I'm Bill Peretta. And um, I'd like to talk about the trying to get this. I'm in the twilight zone, or at least our club is on the, the zoning of this project that goes between um, OCR to the NC2. And we're in a struggle here in trying to find a fit for a project that's non conforming on that OSC site or that not direct site, Lakeway Record Club. So there's no clean pathway of getting this project underway. So when you're trying to figure out how to get this to work and we really need the help of the planning commission or the staff to help us through. Uh, we received um, 
um, as there a note or a, um, a summary of what the the, the plan committee is going to, the planning commission is going to do is to um, to amend the OSC zone by adding commercial health fitness facilities into the zone, which we appreciate that. That's that's a start. But if you look at the OSC two uh, development standards, there's two big issues. One is the ceiling height of the of the project, and two is the impervious surfaces. In regards to the ceiling height, uh, there are standards that the ATP and USTA have for competitive, high, highly competitive tennis matches. And they recommend a clearance of 40 feet from the floor to the roof structure for net clearance. Uh, when you factor in the uh, structural steel beams, purlins, insulation, lighting, mechanical stuff, you could probably add five, six more feet so around 45, 46 feet for at the ridge of the building that runs the length of the project. You can see that we're over the 40 foot um, maximum height in the OSC two zone. So I don't know if a, if a rezone or not zone, a variance of some sort would work or is another pathway to incorporate that um, uh, development standard into the uh, OSC two criteria. And um, and then the next part is the impervious surface. This is probably a more a major one here. OSR2 uh, restricts our impervious areas up to 30% of the site. With our new uh, six court building expansion, it will require additional parking because we have more parking, more people. Uh, sidewalks to get from the main street to the front door and to the new club, new clubhouse. Uh, the new driveway approach to 112th Street and most importantly, the emergency vehicle access, EVA access around the whole building because the hose has to go. It's a long building, hose has to be pulled from 150 feet to the, to the source of the fire. And we will definitely exceed the 30% impervious. Uh, and then with the future pickleball and lounge expansions and different phases of this project, we anticipate at a full build out about 55% impervious. So we're jumping from 30% up to 55%. And so if we, so basically you can't build the tennis court and building on this site with those, these two obstacles in the way. So if, if the only option is, is go back to NC2, the neighborhood commercial, I don't know where that will go to, but uh, we just need your help in trying to get this project through here because this would impervious services and seeing higher big big items to to get resolved great so we'll need your need your assistance i don't know who we talked to on your staff but we know mm -hmm. tiffany and there's josh and jennifer mm -hmm. okay yep so well i suppose we would work with them or we'll get comments back from the in yep. the commission yep we'll take all that in consideration and our recommendations going to the city council so we will um hear from staff and the fellow commissioners so i okay. appreciate your testimony okay. and thank you thanks again for coming okay again i'll be here next week also <laughs> uh how about connie um worth math uh, let's see worth the where the Hello, my name is Connie Worthen. I'm a um, longtime member of the Lakewood Racquet Club over 20 years. Um, I raised my two kids. Uh, they played tennis and um, they're now grown. I'm still playing and enjoying tennis. Um, I've been a member of the board twice and uh, active at there as captains for different teams. Um, my reason for being here tonight is, is to encourage you to yes, please help us get these new courts put on. Um, we would really like to bring kids back to our community. It's an aging process right now. We feel like we have a lot of great members, but they're all in their, you know, plus 40s, plus 50s. And guess what? Tennis should be for kids as well. And that's that's the focus of our intention of building these courts is to bring the kids in, bring the families in give kids a something to do that is healthy and um, good for them, good for us. Um, so like Bill said, I, I really encourage you to look at his, he has the, the, not the professional knowledge. I don't have that. I just know that 
I love our club. I really want it to succeed. It's been here for 60 years. I'd sure love to see another 60 years. And I really appreciate your help getting us to the next level. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. And Mr. Winslow. And Enslow say, I live here in Lakewood. Um, I don't think I need to mention the height. We joked about playing tennis in a much lower facility. Um, so it isn't going to work with the height. It's not going to work with the pervious. Um, I sat with, and I know I'm repeating, is I sat with um, Josh Kubitza. Kubitza. And he said, you ain't going to get a variance for that. So it's like, I don't know why we're we're going down a route that we need variances. I I I don't understand it. Um, uh, well, I got um, I've been kind of spearheading the program back in the um, um, where you flush out the problems with the uh, pre-application. And, and then they directed us right into the rezone. We needed to do that rezone. And I filled out all the SEPA information. And we get the best darn SEPA you ever did see. It was positive NC2, NC2, NC2. Just wonderful news. I jumped the gun. I blew it for the club. I went out and said, hire the architect. Let's get going. Hire uh, the soil engineer. We were concerned where the actual building's going to go. Let's get that. We're rocking. We're really going. I, I invited Becky Newton out to come out to see us. And she says, Ken, I got a gal, Malia. I don't know if you guys, uh, I don't think she's with it. The city hires her to do fundraising. And she come out and says, you got a doable deal. I envision it's always changing is some funding that's going to go with um, partial debt partial fundraising, naming rights, that kind of thing. And we were so excited to get started. And then we got the, no, we're not endorsing it. And I said, I'm supposed to go and talk to this list of guys that are going to maybe do naming rights and say, well, I don't know if we'll get the permit. I was, I was flabbergasted that it just got shut down like that. So then it, um, uh, I, we're, we're excited to get going. I, I can't do anything until this fundamental thing is whether or not we can build on it. Your own staff says the, the OSR, I don't know if you, I'm sure you guys do, but the OSR, Lake Stelicum is zoned OSR. The cemeteries are zoned OSR. Indoor tennis clubs, the only reason it's there is because you guys added it. I have a lot of respect for what you guys do. I, I really do. It's been a little much, you know, and now I'm, I'm, I'm feel bad. I had the club spend a bunch of dough on all these things, which we would have never done any of it. If it wasn't for the, that wonderful SEPA, go back to that SEPA, take a look at it. Talks just about the NC2. Um, I hope, I hope it, if, if you guys decide not to, and we and then we we're up here with the city council and we're giving it the same all again, and we get a negative on that. Um, I think we're not going to give up, but we're probably not going to do anything with the variance. We can't spend engineering uh, all the stuff just to get ready for a variance meeting in front of a hearing examiner. No, the likelihood is we'll be back here. We'll be back here in a year and a half from now to apply for a new rezone and, uh, and just keep plugging. I see that as our avenue rather than a variance avenue. I mean, unless uh, I think Bill said, hey, we need some help with this variance idea if you think well, that's an avenue. But the based on what we know now, we'll see in a year and a half and for the rezone if you guys decide against it. Um, so, all right. I, I hope you give that a lot of strong consideration and NC2, read that SEPA again, and I'll stop talking and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Winslow. Appreciate it. 
Anyone else wishing to speak on any other on your public comments? Anyone? I see no one else signed up. No one? Do we have anyone online? No, Mr. Chair. No one online. Okay, we'll close the public comment period at this time. We'll move next to our, uh, on our agenda. And now we're gonna open up a public hearing tonight, which um, people that uh, are in the audience would like to speak under public hearing. And um, it's tonight it is under the update to the Lakewood Multifamily Tax Exemption Program. We have Ms. Becky Newton tonight. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hello, uh, commissioners. Uh, good to be here tonight. Uh, yes, we are here to talk again about the multifamily tax ex exemption program. And I'm just going to briefly go over uh, some of the comments and areas that we're focusing on uh, for changes to this particular program. As you all know, there was legislative updates in 2021, and so the city must uh, do some updates to its program uh, to comply. And so the purpose tonight is to get additional comments and feedback on the program. I'll uh, concentrate on certain areas that we're focused on as potential areas for change. The first of which is the size of uh, the our number of units that are required. Um, currently, it's four units, and uh, planning commission members thought perhaps we should go to 15 units. And also um, thinking that four units was too small and not to allow MFTE on low density. If it is allowed there, it should have additional restrictions applied. And um, <clears throat> the, the next area is on uh, page five of your packet under permanent residential. And uh, that's where at least 50% must be provided for permanent residential occupancy. Some of the recommendations from our consultant were to remove the 20 year or the 12 year, excuse me, in favor of the 20 year approach. City staff suggested retaining the 12 year and adding safeguards mm -hmm. in order to prevent affordable units from being sold for market rate and increasing the partnerships uh, with nonprofits so that we can potentially offer the 20 year um, program. Also to consider the 20 year program in non-TIF areas is one thing to, to think about because it does affect what we can bond against if we do a TIF project or an increment area. Planning Commission had several comments to add. Obviously we need more housing in general, including affordable, agree with increasing the partnerships uh, affordable is hard to achieve at 20%, so we realize that is the case. The MFTE framework is substantial incentive that we do uh, need to keep in order to encourage development in Lakewood, and also to review the housing needs and find out what we lose to competition. Uh, we do are fairly built out, as you know, but we do lose a lot of housing to other um, areas, and we have a lower uh, build rate as compared to many of our peers in the area. <clears throat> also, um, Planning Commission suggested we incentivize mixed use and consider other incentives that could be added and um, commented that it's not likely a developer will overbuild. The market still plays a major role, of course, in development. And um, and then also under compliance, of course, we uh, all projects must comply with uh, city standards, building codes, and so so forth, and be mindful of what other housing incentives that we have, and that they work together. Uh, suggesting that we provide clearer fee reductions, as well as equal proportions of units building of the same type. There's some disagreement in that only because um, the city did a survey on our, our housing in 2022, which suggested that we need more one bedroom and studios. And so um, that is something we're looking at. Um, also in that survey, we discovered that our multifamily is 98 to 99% occupied. Mm -hmm. So there is again, a need for more housing. Uh, we also looked at the application procedure. Of course, we 
We offer the eight and 12 year MFTE right now, eight year for market rate and 12 if 20% affordable is included. Uh, staff and or our consultant uh, encouraged us to maintain the eight year um, economic development for economic development uh, purposes in the downtown and Lakewood Station District. Uh, obviously we'll need to provide and update our guidebook, including guidance guidance uh, for those who are applying. Um, and, and there is a suggestion that perhaps we look at changing it to a council review, um, from a council review to an administrative process. The council process adds about three to four months to a project. Um, and so, other comments that were provided, um, developers need assurances and consistency um, with the development process. Some cities are willing to pass that authority on to the staff. Uh, council would need assurance if we were to go to an administrative process that the program and checklists were adequate uh, for the program. Uh, minor adjustments to design should be done at the staff level. That was one comment that was made, as well as um, council would still obviously need to approve development agreements. Uh, suggested that we provide a sunset provision or reauthorization deadline. Also suggest a more organized view of the process and formal checklist for approval and to try to streamline the process to be more efficient. And then uh, um, there will be an auditing program that's developed by the state. So we'll be working with the state to see most of it will probably be at the state level, but obviously the city will have to be involved in the auditing as well. RTA designation it was suggested that we look at other areas to expand. And um, right now we're going through our comp plan process and also looking at Tilikum and perhaps increasing densities in that area. So those are considerations uh, when you're thinking about that. And also thinking about what other incentives or restrictions should be added to the program uh, to help. Um, just a couple other considerations. Uh, when uh, we're looking at the program, um, consider staff time to administer and uh, risk of displacement. So we don't want it in areas where we're going to displace low income housing with market rate as an example. Uh, also government needs to understand that and realize time um, <laughs> is money and MFT costs need to be balanced with what is received uh, for the new or rehabilitated uh, uh, projects. Uh, under legislation, uh, um, you'll see in your packet, of course, the eight-year and the 12-year, as well as the 20-year home ownership, which requires the 25% affordability under the 20-year home ownership are available to the city if we wish to add that to our program. And then overview, there are four major areas that we need to address. Uh, Additionally, strategize on the auditing I've already mentioned, uh, long-term affordability, including levels of affordability. So uh, currently we're at 80% AMI to qualify for the, the affordability. Um, so that's something that, that we'd like to consider. Do we want to adjust that lower? Also, um, we, can, um, we can use the Tacoma um, affordability um, as compared to their median income, which is much higher than Lakewood's median income. So that's something also to keep in mind when thinking about what, what the rate should be at um, to, to allow for the affordability. And then uh, consideration uh, for TIF. And so the city is currently looking at an analysis for the downtown for a potential increment area. So obviously if MFTE is also that, uh, within that area, it takes away from what we can bond against uh, for future um, infrastructure. And then the RTA expansions. <clears throat> and uh, with that, I will conclude my comments and uh, ask if there are any other additional comments that you'd like to share this evening. 
Yes, Mr. Larson. Thank, thank you for all the work. It's been a huge amount of work that you you have done, and uh, your you and your staff are to be commended for it. It's just re really tremendous. Uh, you mentioned streamlining, and I would uh, hope that 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 be kept uh, in place as a priority to see at every level where the permitting and the government approvals can be streamlined and made easier because it's very subtle, but they're also very, very expensive and added to the cost of providing housing. And if that's uh, if, if that can be part and parcel of the effort, I think it would be uh, well received by the development and building community, as well as the people at the end of the day that have to pay the rent. I think also that going to 20 years instead of 12 is a really positive step because um, it will take away the incentive to create low income using in order to be able to convert them as an investment in the at the 12th year to market rate and and then we just blew it basically so uh, those are really great things thank you mr combs thanks um Excellent work. I know you uh, pretty much cited every comment we made last time and had a response for it. So uh, stellar, we don't get that very often. Yeah. Uh, number two, just to touch on the 20 year, and I, um, I, I don't normally disagree with Lynn, but on this one, I'm gonna disagree. Okay. And, and the reason why is the, the objective for MFTE, there is, um, affordability, and there's also economic development. And so what is the purpose? And when we look up the MFT and why it's there. So yeah, at 12 years, do we want it to convert over? Well, it'd be nice to keep the affordability, but the economic development happened and it would not have had that not had that not started. And so I actually think it's better to have it sunset. And I would Add, I, I'm not a big fan of the 20 year because I've read the language on the 20 year language and it is a handcuff heavy you know, process. And if you look at how many people are using the 20 year, it's very, very short and it's targeting very low income uh, users. So it's a high, it's highly restrictive for I think 99 years for the 20 year program which is very similar to a long-term land lease so long, as long as you can get really. And it's, I, if you had to say what's going to be here in a hundred years, I would hate to handcuff anyone with that. And especially if the city, if there's a good use, a better use in 50 years or 30 years, or if it's right in the heart of something that needs to be upgraded and updated and changed, I've worked with enough affordable housing and very low income housing to know that the income doesn't, the work doesn't always get done. And those properties aren't always uh, the most um, well-maintained. And it doesn't mean that they don't all, that, that some don't do a good job, but my history with them has not been as uh, favorable as the market rate where they have to keep up in order to be able to rent. So I, I, I have a little bit of baggage with that. I'm a big fan of affordable housing. I'm a big fan of taking care of, um, you know, affordability and addressing it in several ways. But I I don't want to, I, I guess I'm a little leery about um, overextending the program to in that regard. That being said, there's not a lot of people signing up for it right now. So maybe it's okay to leave it in. Uh, CD Tacoma, if you go down, you can see all the projects that they've done. And almost all of them are eight to 12, um, which is encouraging. So in an open market, that's what's being done. If at some point we see that happening, that would be a time where I might want to recalibrate. Um, number two was um, I, I'm, a, I'm sensitive to displacement. My only caveat would be if there's a spot that's targeted for economic growth and there's property that is in a that is derelict that needs to get updated i actually propose that we do encourage it in those areas because that's what we're trying to get is economic growth so i i understand the displacement issue 
I think that just needs to be balanced off. So I, it, you know, I would say ex the exception or the, in my opinion, the exclusion would be except for targeted economic growth areas or something like that so that we can get more housing in there and more stuff to happen to spur, you know, address the housing issue. And um, I would just to add on the AMI, I think I, I, and I know that we're a little bit less than Tacoma, but we need the shot in the arm to get stuff going more, more market rate development going. Cause there's not a lot going on re related specifically to that. So I, I would leave it at 80. Um, City of Tacoma did adjust and they dropped it down to a lower level and applications tanked and they turned it back on and it started going back up. And so rather than making, trying to learn, I would just say, let's, let's observe and not, not redo their, their mistakes. So those are my only comments. And again, thank you for just knocking them out of the park. Yep. Great. Mr. Larson. I think I would adjust my view on the 20 year perspective of sales, review it after 12 and see whether it's appropriate to continue it on. One thing that happens is a person who's low income today in 12 years very well may not be low income and need a transition system for that. So we'll see where this goes and where uh, adjustments can be made as we go on to perpetuate the value uh, to work for the community, which is economic growth. Any other? Yeah, so maybe the discussion between us, because I was for the 20 years. I think it made sense hearing that background and the, the limitations that causes. Based on your experience, is the 12 year it has actually been an impact and actually created more economic development because, with that less restriction or shorter restriction? Yep. Okay. I mean, for me, that's the ultimate goal is what we're trying to do. I, you know, thinking about the 12 versus 20, I don't want somebody kicked out at year 12 and that we've lost this and we, we go up, but it does make sense that we've got to have it in the first place. And so I, hearing that, I think that helps change my mind a little bit more than I was thinking about it before. Can I add yes. one more thing? Yes, Just Mr. Combs. Operationally for affordable housing and not to get in the weeds, but the it's not a designated unit. It's a person who qualifies and they can qualify out. So once they start making more money, it used to not be this way, but they could qualify out potentially. That depends on how the city does it. And the city may say when they get in there, they're in and they're great and they can stay in, which is a good system. Uh, but if the state requires more you know, conditions on it, they may say, okay, every year you have to recertify. And if that's the case, it's a lot more work for the operator. Um, but in, in that case, they can just kind of go where they need to go. So it actually serves its role, helps them during the time. And then when they qual don't qualify anymore, they actually can go to market, which to me is ultimately what we're trying to do is get everyone to be able to take care of themselves when the time comes. Yep. Any other comments? Okay. Thank you. Great job. And I appreciate echoing everyone else. You know, you took all of our comments um, citizens comments and all that and incorporated and reviewed and, and give us the feedback back to us. So um, like Mr. Combs says, sometimes that really hasn't happened. So we do appreciate all your efforts, your staff and everyone trying to get this thing to uh, bring economic development into the uh, projects here instead of to our neighboring uh, cities. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Public yep. hearing. Yes, I will. I didn't know if you had any oh, other no, comments. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, yes. Okay, I'm no, good. no problem. <laughs> so, yeah, so then uh, at this time, thank you, Ms. Newton. Appreciate it. So at this time, then, public hearing. We're going to be talking about that afterwards. Yep. So uh, we will continue this um, public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak uh, under this uh, public hearing for the update to the Lakewood Multifamily Tax Exemption Program? Feel free to come up to the microphone at this time. State your name and the city you reside. Um, if you'd like to speak uh, under this public hearing, anyone back there? All right. Anyone online? No, Mr. Chair. No online? Okay, at this time, we'll close the public hearing um, and move on to unfinished business. 2020. 
23 Comprehensive Plan Amendments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will share a brief presentation here for you to summarize where you're at. So, sorry, there we go. There, as you as you know, there are nine total amendments in this uh, docket that are is in front of you tonight for potential action. And really the two that have garnered the most discussion is 202303, which is the Lakewood Racquet Club rezone request. And you heard more comment this evening. And then the other one is 202305, which is related to emergency housing and other special housing needs. But these other seven here are also part of the um, packet and they are all recommended by the department to you for approval. Um, the tree canopy uh, goal adding uh, to the comp plan, rezoning and redesignating areas for uh, phase three of the, sorry, I'm getting the acronym wrong, the Lhasa uh, Gravelly Lake Commons project. Looking also at uh, amending policies regarding what type of funding for financial relocation assistance is allowed by the city, adding a parcel to OSR1 for expansion of the city's wards like park, updating the comprehensive plan related to Western State Hospital, and then also removing language from a comp plan policy that says a property owner has to occupy a primary or secondary unit on a lot. So going to 2023-03, which is related to the Lakewood Racquet Club, if you recall, originally it was requested that um, these parcels that right now are actually split zoned, there's multiple zoning uh, on the three parcels involved, was requested to rezone to OSR2. And then at the end of March, the Racquetball uh, Club submitted an application, or a, a communication, I should say, changing the request to go instead to Neighborhood Commercial 2. In the public hearing process, there was comment made about how NC2 within this part of the city, as you see, um, may not be the best choice simply because of the other allowed uses within NC2. So if for some reason in the future you had the racket club close or want to change what it did on its parcels, there was quite a bit of other options that could be taken which weren't necessarily compatible with the surrounding residential uses. So at the last conversation that was had here at the planning commission level was maybe taking a look at what you could allow within OSR2 um, to make it a conditional use for these health and fitness facilities, which would require a slightly different or a different um, application and review process whereby the staff would take a look at things, but it would be an approval through the hearing examiner process. Um, conditions would be uh, placed on the op application based on the hearing examiner's review and any public comment received, et cetera. So it does add time uh, and probably cost to this application, but the city is coming to you with that choice as a way to try to come to a, a compromise of sorts between the need, which I don't think anyone denies for the continued operations of this club, but on the other hand, the, the larger public interest about the type of uses within the middle of this residential area. So in terms of OSR2 or NC2 or allowing it as a conditional use, it's really up to the commission if you wanna take that action tonight to amend what's being recommended to you by the city. Um, to go ahead and go with the city recommendation to do something else. As you know, your recommendation goes to city council and then they make their um, decisions based on their own uh, discussions and a public hearing that they will hold. Uh, but that's where it sits tonight coming from city staff is a conditional use of health and fitness facilities within OSR2 and then getting rid of the split zoning so everything would be OSR2 for the racket club. And then jumping to 2023 this is again the special needs housing. There's been a lot of conversation about this. If you recall at the last public hearing on the 3rd of May, we actually had testimony come in from Lehigh saying that they appreciated the changes that were made and they did not have any additional requested changes. There was a continued concern about the thousand foot mm -hmm. distance, um, but they did not state it as strongly as requesting it go away. So, what we have done here is provide a map which shows where a proposed overlay for emergency housing, this is not all of the special needs, but just emergency housing uh, and shelters would be allowed within the city. So it's this teal color over to the east or the right side of the city and then down in Tillicum as well. This is um, based on House Bill 1110 definition of where uh, transit stops are and everything within 
a half mile, excuse me, within one mile of transit stops would be part of this overlay for emergency housing. But what you see on this map is that open space, public institutional, industrial, air corridor one, air corridor two, and clear zone are all taken out of the overlay because that's not where any residential uses would happen. So again, you're seeing an overlay here that is for the most part, the central, east central part of the city coupled with Tillicum. Uh, and then you also see that there are additional other residential areas, obviously to the west of the um, lakes in particular that would be unaffected by this overlay. That is only for emergency housing. The other special needs housing would be citywide. So the recommendation, I'm sorry, where did I go? The recommendation is then to go along with, um, as it's presented to you in the packet tonight, obviously you are able to make amendments to any and all of these amendments, not only 2023, 03 and 05, but any of the other ones as well. If you're ready to take action tonight, great. If you need more time, that's perfectly fine. Um, but then once you do take action, it will move on to city council for their own study session, public hearing, and then action. And with that, I will turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Parsons. Oh, excuse me. Um, I had, so we had some comments earlier about, um, you know, the uh, OS2, OSR2 still requiring variances. Is that still the case that they would need multiple variances, one for the impervious surface area and then one for the building height? It wouldn't be a variance. It would be a conditional use in front of a hearing examiner, which is slightly different. Oh. And um, what happens in the conditional use process is the city and um, the applicants are in front of the hearing examiner with what they're hoping to do. The city says, here are conditions that we would say, if you follow these things, then yes, from the city's perspective, the hearing examiner can take those and adopt as is, or they can add additional or change the conditions on the project. So the limitations in code that says 30% impervious max or whatever it says, that's not required uh, if you go through the conditional use permit? It would be the starting point. It would be the applicant presumably saying, we need this much more. The city saying, this is where the city is comfortable saying it, the change could go to whatever percentage okay. it might be. And then again, it's up to the hearing examiner. So it's just one application. They just go to the hearing and discuss it at hearing. Yeah, yeah. And when you say one application, it is, no, it is that, time and money, that, but yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Yep, okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Parsons. Yeah, uh, I'm a member of the Lakewood Rap Club, so I'm not able to vote on this, but a question on it. Um, can we recommend, if we do recommend going forward with this, a statement around the variance or trying to encourage that variance to make that hearing go a bit faster or have some kind of influence on there? Yes. If the Planning Commission wants to include any sort of plan, uh, finding of fact in can. Uh, can added to the ordinance tonight or the resolution tonight yes absolutely and then at a high level what what is required generally at these hearings will it be very detailed uh planning that they need or what would generally be uh, the process there it's going to be a level of detail that would otherwise have gone to the city staff for review for approving of a permit so it's going to be this is the site development these are the standards that we're following or this is where we're asking for a deviation from those standards um, Here's our plans for what we're gonna do on the site. And uh, then it's up to the city to react to that and provide its recommendations to the examiner. <clears throat> Any other comments? Uh, yes, Mr. Combs. I, 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 I'm in favor of uh, a single type of opera, you know, uh, approval in the uh, hearing version personally. I, I have trouble with the, the zoning upgrade for all the reasons we talked about last last meeting, there's a lot of issues changing a zoning that will ultimately reside with this property forever. And it's not in a designated zone that will uh, help or benefit or economic. There's no street by it. There, there is absolutely only negatives to it, it, it as far as a zoning overlay look. And so trying to come up with a way, because I think collectively, there's a lot of interest in seeing it happen. Um, but we understand we're in a bit of a pickle and we feel like without having, or at least I do feel like um, without having to rewrite all of our zoning or add a zoning or come up with something 
new, it would be better to do the OSR2 conditional use with a, a hearing examiner. So I'm in favor of that. Um, you know, and we, I, I guess, and I, I like one that this is based on the community and it benefits the community. There's a lot of people who, I mean, two of our people are having to recuse themselves because they're involved. That says something. Um, they do support the schools. I would encourage them to support all the schools, the ones locally, Harrison Prep or other schools that may be interested in looking at that as an option if as they continue to expand and grow. Um, but you know, keep that keep that relationship going so that um, this is something that is another sixty years. Yes, Mister. Yep, I had one comment. Um, yeah, I I, I echo um, those those statements. Uh, the, you know. I would feel fairly comfortable that, you know, they've provided a lot of good information and, you know, it, there's nothing but positives coming from this. I don't see a, you know, a way that a hearing examiner would rule unfavorably. I mean, it's just when everyone is, is being positive that said, you know, we don't want to change the zoning to something to, you know, just outright permit something that could have, you know, negative impacts down the road. So it, it, unfortunately you know would be a bit more of a permitting exercise but i think i think it's it's needed here um rather than just you know allowing something to be permitted outright so mr larson i have a question about uh, i'm in favor of moving the um, set of amendments forward to city council uh, and at the same time i'm conflicted with the lakewood racket club and have been uh, advised to not discuss it uh, so uh, I don't know how in the voting and moving it forward we do that. So I'd appreciate some guidance. I think uh, that what the chair has discretion to do is either separate each motion, or, I'm sorry, each amendment into a separate motion or do it in groups or the whole thing together. It's up to you. So can you go back to sure. the um, emergency housing? No. Oh, did okay. you want to talk about, I did want to talk oh, about that this, when, when the time comes? No, go ahead. I think it is. Go ahead. Yeah. So, I, I, I on emergency housing. Yeah. I I know there. I mean, it, that's state law. I don't know how. I mean, we can't adjust it. But my observation is that if you look at that map, it replicates the lowest income neighborhoods of the city, which is in direct conflict with what we're trying to do. And um, I don't have a solution, but I, I have issue with it. And so I don't know how to get around it, but it's a concern. Yep. And I guess I'll, I'll leave it at that. I, I don't know what else to do. I will be very blunt with the commission, if I could, Mr. Chair. This issue will be in front of you in a couple of months when we talk about the 2024 amendments because equity is a required consideration. And so if it does get adopted in 2023, it may well change next year because of that change. Thank you. Mr. Larson. I was thinking that we could forward it uh, to the council with a concern as stated yeah. so that it they understand our quandary. And I, I'm in full agreement with that problem. Any other comments then on that? Okay, so my suggestion is, is can we go back to sure. the um, excluding all the um, amendments excluding the 03 and 05 at this time. So just those simplified ones that we've already pretty much agreed to pass it on. So um, I would like to uh, have someone make a motion. My my recommendation would be is um, going through, in, can you have them listed? The 2000, you know, 01, 02, 04, 06. Oh, seven, <laughs> yeah. just so I can list them. So um, these particular ones in front of us, the 2023-01, is that it? Yes. Okay. Those I um, would like having a motion to pass this on of approval to the council, if I could. So if I could have a motion. A motion to approve these as outlined. Yeah. Okay. Second. And Mr. Combs and then Mr. Larson. Yep. Second. He, Mr. Larson second. So any discussion on those for passing these on? We'll take a vote. Okay, all those in favor by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? 
Hearing none, we'll pass these on as recommended to the city council. Now to, if we could, to address the 03 and the 05, which before I, us, go ahead, Mr. I, Combs. I, I would make a proposal that we approve with condition um, uh, or uh, pr approve uh, to allow the health fitness facilities as conditions, conditional uses in the OSR2 zone and rezone the, the parcels to OSR2. I actually, I don't think there's anything more we need to say that because that forces it to hearing examine. Uh, okay. Um, or is that, is that right? If, yeah, if, if you were to put it forward to council exactly as in the ordinance or resolution before you tonight, that's what it accomplishes. I think there was discussion about maybe adding a finding of fact, recommending that the um, city work to expedite approval and support this in front of the hearing examiner. So it, that's up to you if you want to add that to um, your motion. Okay, so Mr. Is that what you want to do? Uh, to, that she, yeah, we don't want to have her put words in your mouth. No, I, I'm I'm with you. I'm saying I I'm trying to figure out what expedite means. Does this mean sure. like it's fast tracked, or are we talk at, at like I want to be reasonable about it and yeah, not put, I, and maybe that was a hasty way of wording this. I I think what we would end up writing is um, that the the city work in a timely fashion to move it through the hearing examiner process. I can endorse that, language. and also support um, what would be needed for approval. Yeah, as I'm, much as we could. Yeah. Okay. okay, Mr. Combs made a motion. Do I have second? A second. Any discussion? I, I do have um, a discussion question. Um, at this time, we cannot take a vote. There's only three of us out of the five tonight. Mm -hmm. We need four votes. So, That's correct, Mr. Chair. So that is my directive that uh, there should be and cannot be a vote tonight. Two individuals tonight have recused themselves on this 2003. Um, so we're gonna have to move this on until next um, meeting to hopefully have more than what we have tonight. I think Mr. Estrada will be back and I think Wegman doesn't have a conflict. So I think that's where we lay tonight on the 03. Okay. Okay. And we already did 05? No, um, we still have 05. Yes, we do. Okay. So, do I have a motion on 202305? So, question. Yes. Do, are are we at the spot where I mean this this is what it is? There's no other. I mean we don't really have any options on this. This state requires this. State requires that we satisfy this emergency housing. Let me see if I can say this in an an efficient way. <laughs> The state requires that these are all addressed in the code. Mm -hmm. Where there is some some give and take is in this idea of an overlay. Yeah. Um, this is actually uh, going a little bit beyond what is absolutely the minimum in that mm -hmm. um, bill. If you remember, it was go anywhere where hotels and motels are allowed, mm -hmm. which would be only in the commercial, yeah, commercial one, two, and three zones, and I think NC2. Mm -hmm. What this did, though, was respond to the fact that in Lakewood, at least, those zones are very long linear right. um, paths along major roadways, and you would end up with a concentration potentially of these types of units, right? Mm -hmm. So this was an attempt to try to expand and disperse where these units may be constructed over time. Yeah. If the Planning Commission doesn't like this overlay, it can go away altogether. The overlay could change. Um, you could change this to say this is a citywide allowance and you know not do the overlay, or you could change the boundaries of the overlay. Mm -hmm. But the rest of it, Mr. Combs, yes, it's it's really a state requirement. But th this is where there's a, some options for the city. Mr. Larson. It would seem to me that, that the action needs to take place. <clears throat> that uh, um, our opinion is that uh, our meaning the planning commission opinion is that uh, it's too narrow in its uh, in its approach. It's, it would tend to create instant slums, and uh, that when we forward this to the city for the city council, that uh, is with the advisory that more work needs to be done on the mix and the placement uh, in order to make it uh, uh, fair for all. 
Any other comments or motions or? Um, my, Mr. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Mr. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I mean, this generally, you know, my recommendation or comments previously was, you know, to try to make this as close to the bare minimum as possible. And I think that the overlay does a fine, you know, it's not great, but it's is what it is. And start. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a start and gives this city councils, you know, something to, to look at. Um, but yeah, I, I would generally be in support of, of it as it is right now. Mr. Parsons? Same way. I, I don't think it's there. Um, but if we're if we can recommend that more needs to be done, then that's the start. And I think we can move it forward. In myself, I would probably echo Mr. Parsons, Mr. Pearson, Mr. Larson. Mr. Combs still probably has some discussion, probably, but um, I would probably um, agree with this as to um, we've done a lot of work. Staff has done a lot of work trying to massage, but when we're kind of up against, you know, state requirements, um, yes, we went a little bit above and beyond, but um, I think this um, can agree to go ahead, pass it on the way it's written. Okay. City Council will get it. City Council then can revisit, um, digest. I think that's the way I feel tonight. Okay. So moved. Mr. Larson made a motion. I'll second. Mr. Parsons, second. Any discussion? All those in favor by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Hearing none. Number five passes with the recommendation as the staff presented tonight. And and Mr. Yes, Chair. go ahead. If I could be for all of the yeah. Lakewood oh, Racket Club people. Lakewood oh. Racket Club, one minute, if you just. <laughs> just really Peter's. quickly, because this, this is an idea and feel free to say no, but there is a fifth Wednesday in May. If you were available to do a special meeting just to take a vote on 2023-03, it could be done remotely. You don't need to be traveling here. Um, what that would do is keep it on the same schedule as it would have yes. been had it been approved tonight. Yeah. Yes. So if, if you're able and available, we could do that. Okay. So it would be May 31st, May 31st. If we can do that remotely, um, yeah. we zoom. So yep. I think that will work. So we'll, we'll, yeah. Okay. So yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, we're just saying that we're going to have a special meeting for the planning commission to vote on the racket club on May 31st. So it's going to stay on the same schedule as it would have been. Got three and four right there. A possibility. Hey, we don't know what the other two individuals, but really yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, hey. Yes, absolutely. We want to get this in the same procedures as all the rest of them. Yep. Yeah. Maybe Alex needs to kind of show them, show the club how to make a neighborhood, you know, or maybe propose that we uh, we might even check something reasonable. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I appreciate you. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate your comments. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time and thank you. Okay, so all in favor by having this meeting on the 31st, we can do it remotely. That would be the only thing on the agenda. Correct. Okay, Correct. is that okay, Mr. Combs? And it, Karen and I would be here, Ms. Devereaux and I would be here in person if anybody wanted to be, but you're welcome to be okay. remote. Let's keep it short. But yep, yeah. It'll be a five minute meeting. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. And um, just in a predicament where we had two individuals have to recuse themselves, and we appreciate that. Um, you know, that, that's the course of action, that's the proper way. So, okay. Um, yeah, so we're going to move forward. Okay. 2024 comprehensive plan, <laughs> periodic review. Yep. Shake yeah. it all up. Oh, my goodness. Take a walk. Oh. <laughs> All right, let me share my screen once again, Mr. Chair. So, all right, with what you just did, you actually did quite a bit toward <laughs> what is now required for 2024's 
work as well. So what I'm going to do tonight is walk you through a few things that have um, remain out of House Bill 1220 that would be part of this next big review. But there's also two bills that passed in this last session. I'll just call them 1110 and 1337. 1110 is the one that says at least two units per lot, mm -hmm. regardless. And 1337 says you have to allow ADUs. So um, what I'm gonna try to do tonight is just bring you up to speed to where we sit right now. You don't have to um, engage in a deep discussion because this will come back to you many times, but I just wanna keep you apprised of where we're at. So again, with uh, what was just recommended to council with the special needs housing, you've accomplished that part of 1220, thank you. Um, 1337, I just mentioned, and 1110 is the middle housing or the multiple units per lot. And then there's still in 1220, the housing at all economic segments, which we have talked about before. So um, good news for us, the accessory dwelling unit requirements out of the bill say that you have to allow it. And then there's regulation restrictions basically that the state legislature said. And they also encourage cities to uh, offer incentives on ADUs. Where we sit as a city is that ADUs are allowed. And I'll just jump ahead to, these are the zones where ADUs are already allowed outright. Um, but what we will also do is just go back and look to make sure that the regulations on ADUs comply with 1110. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I'd say we're 75% of the way there already. The second one is 1110, which is the allowing two residential units per lot, which is not per acre, but per lot. And then if there is at least one affordable housing unit proposed, it can go or it should go up to four units per lot. In addition to that, if, you're, if you are within a quarter mile of uh, a major transit stop, it would also be four units per lot, not per acre uh, throughout the city. So jumping ahead to that. Right now, and again, I'm sorry, I don't know why I can't get this top thing to go away. But what that says is the bill says you have to allow nine, I'm sorry, six of nine types of housing, duplex, triplex, four, five, sixplex, townhouses, um, stack flats, courtyard apartments, and cottage housing, six out of nine. Lakewood already allows all nine, so that's taken care of. What you see here in this chart is where they are allowed. So detached single family, and then you see duplex and triplex and townhouse. The four plus residential units, anything above four units is called multifamily in Lakewood, but that would include the four, five, six plexes as well as apartments. Cottage housing is already allowed as well in the residential zones. Uh, and then you see where the ADUs as well as mobile home parks are allowed. This is the map that looks at where this would uh, come into play. So the yellow on the western side of the city, that is outside of a quarter mile of transit. And so those are the areas where it would be two units per lot, um, unless someone were to propose an affordable project and then you could get four units per lot. Primarily in the e central eastern part of the city where the orange is, that is where it would be four units per lot because it's in a quarter mile of transit. You'll see that there's a lot less there on the eastern side of the city because, again, as you know, there's public institutional, there's industrial, there's uh, open space on the eastern side. Not taking into account any restrictions due to critical areas, trees, anything else, floodplain, this in theory would take you um, from the current capacity in the city of about 11,500 units, somewhere between now and 2044, we have room for, up to 38,783. So we would be well beyond any required housing capacity. However, remember that you have to be planning for units at all these different AMIs. And so that's where some of this uh, may come into play anyway. This also assumes that 38,000 is kind of ridiculous, quite frankly, to talk about, but what we would be doing next as a staff before this comes back to you is take a look at all of the um, lots that do have restrictions due to uh, critical areas or other um, environmental restrictions, whether it is they're on a shoreline, whether it is flood zone, or also the biggie is infrastructure. Mm -hmm. If there is inadequate infrastructure, right. there are conditions and there are limits on what would be required. So it's not going to be that final number, but this is just on paper as a giggly exercise where this takes us. 
Can I ask one question just to clarify? So sure. it's, it's two, two homes per lot. Is it also an ADU on top of that or does that count as one of the homes? I am reading this bill. So please, grain of salt. Yeah. I am reading it. It says units per lot. Mm. And I am saying that means both an ADU and a primary residence. I could be wrong, but that's the way I'm reading it right now because they could have distinguished that and they didn't. They just used unit. Mm. So the other things Wait, that we will I'm do. I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't understand the answer. So what does that mean? Is that SFR and ADU? Right? Yeah. ADU so ADU. the question is, yeah. could you have um, a primary residence and an ADU, and then with HB eleven ten also have another primary residence and another ADU with that, and that would be your two units per lot. Mm -hmm. I am suggesting with my interpretation, which please again grain of salt. Mm -hmm. When they say units per lot, I think that's both of those things. So it seems like ADU is a unit. I, I, I'm yeah. thinking that yeah. that is yeah. what the legislature intended, that the unit incorporates both. If I'm wrong, I'll be sure to admit it, but that, that's the way I'm interpreting it right okay. now. Okay. I just want to make sure I was tracking it too. That's yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So the rest of what has to happen with 1110, we have to um, go again, critical areas and the buffers, um, looking at an alternative process, this is where you can start to say, hey, wait a minute, we don't have infrastructure capacity um, and there's increased flooding or something else within the next hundred years. So some of those lots may get pulled back out of the calculation. And there may also be because of infrastructure um, insufficiency, you can apply for an extension in parts of the city. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be looking at all of these things to see exactly how that affects what Lakewood has on the ground now versus what it would need to do under this bill. Um, from what I understand, the a lot of the reason behind 1110's passage is there are a number of other jurisdictions that don't look like Lakewood and haven't planned to this point like Lakewood, and they have a lot more of simply what we would call like our R1, R2 citywide. So I think after doing all of this analysis, that map that I just showed you, um, the number of yellow and orange lots is going to go down. And then, of course, all of this is is a market decision ultimately by those property owners. So. While in theory, this is economic development decision property by property, how quickly that will happen, anybody's guess. Let's see if there's anything else we need to cover tonight. Oh, and then we get into the housing for all economic segments. We've talked about this a lot already. Um, but just a reminder that with the change, um, we actually have now, even without the two units per lot we just talked about, we have in Lakewood capacity for 11,371 per our last buildable lands report. What this HAPT tool, which is showing us how much we have to do with the economic segment, that total is only 9,378. So we already have the capacity. That's not a problem. It's the how can we plan for all of these different levels of affordability. And so that gets into what you were just talking about with the special needs housing things and also um, MFTE and whether those projects will turn into affordable housing projects altogether or still be market rate, et cetera. I'm not going to take you through all of this. It's too painful. Um, but here, this is that same table that you saw a few slides ago showing you where things are currently allowed. These are some very initial thoughts where we would add duplexes, triplexes, and townhomes to the R zones as well as mixed residential. And then the four units are four units per lot, if within a quarter mile of transit, you see that in yellow as well. So those are some initial ideas of how allowed uses in any of the zones would happen. And then to really blow your mind, um, this is a new map. This is one residential zone, one medium residential zone, which is essentially the um, mid density multifamily a transit residential zone, which is everything within a quarter mile of transit. And basically that's it for residential. We get rid of a lot of the other zones mm. and those lower, um, those fewer zones allow more types of housing at higher density. The commercial at this point and everything else is unchanged. But what that is, is a very, very initial thought of maybe this is how Lakewood might look post 2024 discussion. Please don't even remember this. This is <laughs> undoubtedly not going to be the final thing. But, the, you know, these are the kind of things that we're going to be putting in front of the public 
um, for their reaction over the next six or seven months. We're going to do this ahead of time before it ever comes to you and be able to bring you back. In addition to the hearings that you have, we're going to have um, focus groups, pop-up events, et cetera, where we can bring you um, citizens' reactions to these types of things. Yes, Ms. Larson. I have two burning questions about, about this whole thing. The big one is uh, infrastructure. Yeah. We're going to load four houses onto a lot that has one house on it, three additional homes on the same sewer uh, capacity that's in the street. And, and then obviously you have to connect each one to sewer. And uh, where do we stand in terms of sewer capacity? Uh, and uh, I guess close in that, behind that would be liquid water. Correct. Now, what do, what do you do in terms of actually being able to let the, this thing happen? The other burning question that I have is, what do you do with deed covenants? where you have uh, uh, subdivisions that are created with certain rules and regulations that are attached to the deeds. Does the state law trump that? Does it change it? Does it make those deeds not enforceable anymore? What happens in law that, uh, that affects uh, what a person has always believed their property rights are? That's a, to me, that's a, a real big open question. And Mr. Larson, you're absolutely right to ask those questions because um, as you know, the city does not own those utilities, so it's not like it can make these decisions unilaterally. It's going to be dealing with Pierce County Sewer Utility and then Lakewood Water District. And um, for instance, the sewer department is getting ready to update the county's unified sewer plan. So they're, you know, they provide sewer for a lot of um, unincorporated as well as city areas. They don't plan to have that done until 2025. <laughs> So we're doing all of this without them even having their up-to-date stuff. I think it's been over 10 years since they looked at that plan. Lakewood Water District is in the middle of doing its own capacity planning, including um, selling water outside of, of its service area. So those are discussions that the city will need to try to engage in, but it will affect absolutely the pace at which any of this could happen. Regarding your question on deed restrictions, what we have as preliminary, preliminary reaction from our legal department is those deed restrictions stand. And so again, the pace at which all of this is gonna happen isn't as fast as maybe the legislature anticipates. Thank you. Yep. Is that your I'm kind of done. comments? <laughs> okay, I see Mr. Boki, council member Boki's on a line. Do you have any updates for us? Oh, excuse me. Hold on, Mr. Boki. Right. You didn't have your light on, you don't. Comment. Jeez, sorry. Go ahead. Um, so a uh, couple, uh, is, is there any, um, with re respect to deeds and covenants, is there any, you know, if you do a new subdivision, can you even put restrictions on your covenants to not allow for multiple, you know, home, or is that, how does that work? Is that a thing at all? St the state law does say any new deed restrictions are limited, but it's the ones that are already out there. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. And then, um, the two units, you know, I'm a little, I think there needs to be some more, you know, um, working on it. Is that, yeah. does that even include a dwell, an, an ADU or is it just straight up, could you have two just primary dwelling units? Like, you know, is that, because we need to, we need to make sure that our code is tight enough that we're not allowing for, you know, all kinds of stuff, <laughs> you know, that's like chaos. Yeah. Um, and so just really getting some of that stuff dialed in, um, I think that's going to be super important. And um, I think that, you know, I, I'm glad that we you did show us the picture that said 38,000, you know, units, because, you know, while that might not be tr quite true, it's like, it's a shock, right? And so, you know, um, how do you deal with that? And, and you know, it may be slow or, you know, if developers and people, you know, find loopholes, they're going to exploit them and it could be fast. It could be, you know, that people are coming in and just turning over lot after lot after lot, you know, while we are sitting here like trying to figure it out. And so, you know, it's super important in my opinion to get this dialed in as quick as we can. Yeah. The, um, Changes that you just saw talked about in zoning will be accompanied with all the development regulation changes at the same time. So none of the zoning um, changes will happen unless and until the regulations are in place as well. And we have until next fall 
to really dive deep and make those changes. Yep. I, yeah. Those are just my Mr. Larson. concerns. One anecdotal observation is that one of the problems we've had in Lakewood for you know, a long, long time is the substantial number of 7,500 and 10,000 and 12,000 square foot lots with one home on them. And I can see a, a change as long as there's infrastructure capable of, of, uh, of infill that uh, previously had not been considered possible. And I can see now if you can put four uh, homes on a site that's 10 or 12,000 square feet, uh, it makes sense to tear down that 1940s and 50s uh, uh, post World War II house and and redevelop the the property into more modern housing. And uh, I think that's an opportunity that uh, is looks like it's on the table uh, for Lakewood now. That's that is what the legislature is hoping does happen: is redevelopment and infill at a at a quick pace. Great. Yeah. All right, Mr. Council Member Boki, back from Korea. Korea, yes. Welcome home. Yeah, glad to be back. It was a nice, nice trip. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, to I might as well just start with uh, dovetailing of comments uh, on Tiffany's comments about this whole uh, the HAPTA tool. And we are actually voting on that tomorrow at the PCRC. Uh, there are two, there are two kinds of methods to determine how uh, you'll handle the new, the different levels of housing or the uh, the the uh, the tranches of housing by income. And uh, there's method A, which is equal share, and there's there's method B, which is fair share. The proposal in front of us tomorrow night at the PCRC is is method A, and we will be supporting that uh, in discussions with staff today. It was it was decided we'd be supporting that. If if someone does push for method B, uh, we may we may support that. I don't believe that uh, the other cities, especially the smaller cities that kind of dominate the PCRC, will be pushing for method b so uh and that would just take another hour for tiffany to explain so <laughs> we won't ask her um the legislature did pass a possession ordinance we just passed a possession uh drug possession ordinance on monday uh that would have taken effect on the first of july the legislature met uh on tuesday and uh, passed a possession ordinance. It's a gross misdemeanor. Um, not quite what we were hoping for, but <clears throat> we'll live with it and we'll we'll work with it um, and we'll go from there. And so hopefully we can start getting our arms around the drug problem. Um, beyond that, just uh, everything else is going going great guns. Great. We thank you. Any other final comments from? Commissioners, and please let uh, Tiffany know we need at least um, four uh, voting members um, on the 2023-03 for the 31st. Correct. So um, appreciate it, and thank you all for your kind comments and your um, information. Meeting adjourned. Yep.